Hello, in this presentation, we will enter the reversing entry related to the accounts receivable adjusting entry into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how this same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. We will first take a quick look at QuickBooks and then jump into Excel and enter our adjusting or reversing entry there. The accounts receivable reversing entry, like all reversing entries, will be done after the adjusting department and reverse the entry made for accounts receivable. Therefore, we need to know what that receivable reversing entry is. Remember, what happened is that we had an invoice that went out correctly, but the invoice went out after the cutoff date. In our case, it went out in March, even though the work was done in February. And therefore, we needed to bring that revenue back into February. So we recorded the, the entry related to an invoice in February. And of course, what's going to happen there is that as of the point in time that the invoice was actually created, we have put that invoice in the system two times. In order to adjust for that, we could reverse our adjusting entry as of the first day of the following month. So first we'll take a quick look at QuickBooks and then we'll jump back into Excel. In QuickBooks, we have this information here and we could do this once again, most likely would be doing this with the format of entering journal entries and make the adjusting and reversing entries. It is possible to do this with uh, registers, however, and go into the uh, use register and reverse the uh, adjusting entry that was made. In essence, the adjusting entry was an entry that is behind the creation of an invoice. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna say, hey, here's the, here's the journal entry for an invoice, and we will reverse that entry uh, for our reversing entry as of the first day of the following month, in, the, in our case, that being March. So we're gonna enter that into uh, Excel, so we'll take a look at that now. Here we are in Excel, we're in our reversing entries tab. We're gonna be entering a reversing entry for the accounts receivable. And in essence, what we're gonna do first is take a look at this entry. This is a bit more complex of an entry when we, we're looking for the entry related to an invoice and then we want to reverse it. So the easiest way to do something like this, and this is similar to if we were doing a credit memorandum or something like that, is to look at the journal entry and then do the opposite. So we're gonna go back to the adjusting entry and see what the adjustment entry was. So I'm gonna to go to the adjusting entry tab and it's gonna be down, I'm down here in uh, A12 through D17. And the idea here was that as of the end of the month, the invoice related to this entry was entered, but not until after the cutoff date in March, but the work was done before the cutoff date sometime in February. The work in this case is the delivery of inventory. So we would check the shipping documents and we'd say, hmm, the work was done before the end of the month and therefore the revenue under the revenue recognition principle, as well as the cost of goods sold under the matching principle should be recorded uh, in this financial statement. So th this is just going to be the entry for an invoice. We debit accounts receivable and then we credit the uh, merchandise sales, the revenue. And then we have the sales tax payable, of course, as well that we had to collect on it is a credit. And then in the cost of goods sold, we had cost of goods sold of 400 and uh, inventory 400. So what we're going to do is just reverse this again. It's going to look funny. It's going to look weird. And it's going to be actually not totally correct as of the first day of the next month. It won't be correct until the day we actually invoiced somebody sometime in March. So we're, that's the cost we're going to have to sacrifice. We're going to make something look kind of funny until uh, this next thing happens and that the invoice was issued. And once that happens, everything will be correct. And that'll give us a nice break between the accounting department and the adjusting department. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to debit the merchandise sales, we're going to debit the sales tax payable, and we're going to credit the accounts receivable. And then we'll do the uh, debit to the inventory asset and credit cost of goods sold. Let's do that now. Back to the reversing tab. We're going to go all the way back over here to the right to the reversing tab. And we're going to do this as of the first day of the next month, as all reversing entries are the first day after the financial statements were created, which in this case is 3-1 and we're just gonna reverse this out. So we're gonna reverse the order a little bit too. We could make it just the same exact order, meaning uh, before we debited the accounts receivable, and I could start with accounts receivable here, I won't do it, and put it as a credit. 
but then the credits would be on top and whatnot and most of the time when you see these reversing entries they still keep the debits on top which means that we have to adjust the order a little bit so what we're going to do is is uh we could start with accounts receivable but we have to make it a credit so i'll copy that and i'm going to put it on the bottom this time so we, so it's going to be down here b8 right click and paste one two three and we credited it for 525 it was a sales price of 500 and then 25 was the sales tax so it's 525 on the credit and then we had the uh, other side usually is sales if we were to think about it when we're creating the journal entry sales usually goes up and this time we're making it go down note that there's nothing in sales of course because it closed out already to the equity so we're gonna we're gonna make a negative sales here so we're going to copy the sales. It usually goes up with a credit. We're going to make it go down with a debit. So we'll copy K22. We'll scroll upward B6, right click and paste 123. And that is for the 500, the sales price, not including the amount that we will be receiving for the uh, sales tax. And then the difference, of course, is 25. And that's the sales tax that we're going to have it's going to be also reversing it usually would be increasing the sales tax payable here and now it's going to be decreasing it note there is a sales tax payable here unlike there was nothing in the sales down here because this is a permanent account up here as opposed to a temporary account down there and this account did not close out to therefore the equity account so this is the credit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case is a debit so we'll copy K16, right click and copy. Scrolling up, we're gonna put that in B7, right click and paste, one, two, three. We could indent this one over here. We can go ahead and increase the indentation, go into the home tab, the alignment group and increase the indentation. Then we typically have, if we were to record this, we usually have the, the inventory going down <laughs> and now we're doing the opposite. So the inventory is actually going up with a debit because we're reversing this sales entry so we'll copy the inventory asset and we're going to put that in b10 uh, right click and paste one two three and that was for 400 and then we're going to credit something and the other side of that usually is cost of goods sold once again cost of goods sold like an expense account it is an expense account and it has a uh, debit balance it has a zero because it's been closed out to the equity it typically only goes up in the debit direction. We're making it go down by crediting it. So we'll copy the, uh, <laughs> the cost of goods sold. Right click and copy. Scroll back up and that's going to go into B11. Right click and paste 123. We'll indent that now. Go into the home tab. Alignment. Increase indent. And there's our reversing entry. So this is usually pretty complex for people to kind of get the reversing entry by building it like that. It's easiest to think about, let's record the re entry for a journal entry, debiting accounts receivable, crediting sales, crediting sales tax payable, debiting cost of goods sold, crediting inventory, and then reverse that. The thing that makes it a little bit more confusing is that we're, we're going to have to jumble up the order in order to put the debits on top, the credits on the bottom. In practice, if you want to put the credits on top, just because it mirrors exactly what the other entry was <laughs> you can do that it's not it's not exactly wrong it's just it's just um if you're getting picky about the format we'll be picky about the formats uh, if your supervisor doesn't like the credits on the other side then they will not like it if you can justify it by saying that uh, that makes more sense for the reader to be able to see what is happening then they that might be acceptable a computer typically will always put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom just because that's the rules of the system okay so let's go ahead and post this we're going to say here's the sales merchandise sales we're going to scroll down here's merchandise sales in m22 so we are in m22 we're going to say equals and point to that 500 dollars you'll see that it goes up in the in the debit in the debit direction it's actually kind of going a negative sales here so it's making our net income actually go down and this is unusual it looks very strange it look it should look very unusual uh, we'll talk a little bit more about why it is we've already discussed it a bit but we'll talk a bit more about why we're doing that and after we record it and then we've got the sales tax payable here's the sales tax payable here here's the sales tax payable here we are in m16 we're going to select equals and point to that 25 bring the bounce down from 125 down by 25 to 
100. Then we have the accounts receivable. There's the accounts receivable. We'll scroll up. We want to be in M4. We are in M4. Selecting equals. Pointing to that 525. Bringing the balance down from 11,274 by 525 to 10,749. We then going to record the other side. We've got the inventory asset, $400. So here is the inventory asset there. And we are in M5. We're going to select equals and point to that $400, bringing the balance up to $1,713. Then we have the cost of goods sold. Scrolling down to cost of goods sold. Here's the cost of goods sold. We are in M25. We're going to select equals and point to the cost of goods sold and that brings it up in the credit direction. Now again these income statement accounts before we have any activity we have uh, before we've done anything in terms of sales or expenses or paid for anything or consumed anything as of the first day of March we've got these activity in here from the reversing entries. This again very unusual and uh, it, it doesn't really it's not perfect accrual accounting However, it does help us out to make a systematic way to make these type of adjustments. Meaning, if, if there's a, uh, an invoice that was sent out in uh, March that should have been in February, we can have a system of our adjusting process to go through there and say, okay, we're going to look up for our shipping documents in March and see if there's any invoices that uh, we need to pull back and actually record in February before we issue the financial statements. Then we'll do that. And then we can say, okay, instead of me uh, like deleting the original invoice, which could mess up our billing process and all that kind of thing because the invoice is tied to uh, the receivable, then what we're going to, or instead of us trying to wait and, and enter the reversing entries as of the exact date and time, we will just reverse all reversing entries as of the first day of the next month. And that's going to result in this funny looking thing, a uh, reversed sales. But once the invoice is actually made, this will reverse back out to the zero. And within the time period of that month of March, it'll be correct. Therefore, as of the end of March, when we make the financial statements again, this will be uh, zeroed out to zero because uh, this negative sales will match up against the actual sales of the invoice. And we had already recorded the sales in the proper time period in February with the use of reversing entries. So it'll match up and work itself out at the end of the day and it'll also make it so we can have that separation between the accounting department and the adjusting process. Even if it's done by the same person but oftentimes it's not and we don't want our adjusting entries to mess up what's done on the typical day-to-day -day process. It's, it's not good when the adjusting department makes their adjustments and then the uh, normal accounting department's has questions about these funny things that popped up in in there so if we do these reversing entries it will lessen those type of issues those type of timing problems